Hi, this is Jerry from MapDataWorks IT Consulting Services. Okay, so if you're watching this video, you probably have this error on your screen or have had this error on your screen and you're not sure exactly what to do about it. The problem is that when you try to install SQL Server 2005 on Windows 8 or Windows 8.1, you may get this error message. It can occur on other operating systems like Windows 7 and some of the server systems, the later, newer server systems. You know, Microsoft says that it's not a compatible and that is true, but when you read online somebody telling you that you can't install it because it's not compatible, uh, just know that those people just don't understand the problem. It's not that it's not compatible, it's that this version of SQL 2005 is not compatible. Eventually, SQL 2005 will never install on an operating system you know, down the road, maybe Windows 10 or Windows 12. We don't know that. It is coming to the end of its life cycle, though. But for us developers who need it and want it and want to have it on our machine so we don't have to deal with virtual machines and or a separate physical box just to, to house this or to host this database, uh, we want to get it on our machine so we can do our thing. So I'm going to show you how to get around this error, okay? Uh, the prerequisite is that you have to already have a SQL Server 2005 installed on a 64-bit operating system like Windows 7 if you um, are installing on a 64-bit Windows 8. If it's a 32-bit Windows 8 that you're trying to install, then of course, obviously, you're going to uh, need to have SQL 2005 already installed on another machine or a virtual machine for 32-bit. The thing is, is that you have to have the other installation has to be upgraded to at least Service Pack 2. I recommend downloading Service Pack 4 and installing that first. And then you're going to go and grab the files out of it that we're going to need for this. So what you need to do, and let me bring this over, is at the point where you get this error, you need to leave it alone. Leave it on the screen right where it is. Go find where your installer just dropped the files. In particular, the SQL 2005 executable, which is sqlserver.exe. I know that SQL 2005 is version 9, but it's never going to be in here. It's going to be in one of these instances because each instance of SQL Server that you install is going to get its own folder for the binary files and, and possibly the data files if, if you left the defaults for data files. On my system, okay, where I installed this instance of SQL 2005 ends up being here. Okay, and I can tell that also by the dates. This is the date that I'm making the video. This is the date that I'm actually um, doing this project here to show you how to do this. Here we go. We're going to drill down to the binary folder and we're going to look for sqlserver.exe and the other file is sqlos.dll. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get copies of those two files from another installation. I've already prepped these here, and here they are. So what we'll do is we'll copy them right into this folder, to alter replace, the files get replaced, and as you can see, the dates are no longer 2005, they're 2010. So now what you do is you go back to the installer the, where it failed, and you click retry. And as you can see, SQL Server starts and then stops, and the installation can continue and it'll finish and be successful. We'll come back to this as soon as the installation is complete. And that's that. Okay, so the installation completed, everything installed. Now we have a completely corrupted, unsupported installation of SQL Server, but we've got it installed. The next thing you have to do immediately after you click Next and Finish is to run the Service Pack installer to correct the installation. So we're gonna run that, everything gets extracted. That's gonna tell you that's compatibility issues. Don't worry about it, just say run the program. So uh, the uh, Service Pack setup comes up, we say next, we accept. Um, let's select all of the components that we want to upgrade. And okay, yeah, these files are locked. Okay, so it's basically saying is it really wants you to, to, to uh, shut this stuff down. You want to open up services. Oh, and anybody who's wondering how I got Start menu on uh, Windows 8. Uh, let's look for Start 8. Stardoc. Okay, that's right. Okay, so it's stardoc.com. And um, when I bought it, it was like five bucks. Maybe it's ten bucks now. Um, it's great. It adds your Start menu back to Windows. It's completely safe. I've been using it for 
as long as Windows 8's been around. So yeah, so I'm going to go into services. Let's look for what are the things that it's asking for? It's asking for SQL 2005. Okay, so that's Microsoft SQL Server SQL 2K5. Okay, we're going to stop that. And we're going to stop the, the uh, agent, yes. So that takes care of these two. We need to get rid of or, or shut down analysis services, which is OLAP. We'll stop that. And now let's refresh this list. And there you go. Everything's stopped. Oh, DTS server is still running. Okay, so distributed transaction. Uh, I think that's what it is, distributed transaction. Okay, this here is Microsoft SQL Server Integration Services. So we're going to stop that. Okay, we're good. So lock file is not found. Press next to continue and click install. Okay, so now basically all of the uh, service pack stuff is going to install. It takes a while, so we're going to um, pause the video and come back when it's finished. Okay, so everything's installed. We click next. We can check everything was successfully installed. We click next. And we're going to launch the user provisioning tool for Windows Vista. Well, this is something that comes in Windows 2005. It's a pretty good idea for you to give yourself admin privileges on the SQL Server installation that you just installed because otherwise, you know, there's a potential you could be locked out of it. All right, so I'm going to refresh my services real quick here. I want to start them back up. Well, analysis services, really, I don't I don't need that running all the time. I'm going to set that to manual, leave that off. And then so we have SQL Server 2005. We'll start that up. And the agent for SQL 2005, we'll start that up too. Once those are started, we're going to launch the provisioning tool. And I'm going to give myself the admin privileges Okay, so obviously from the message, it said make sure the SQL browser is running. So we're going to come over here to uh, the uh, services, and we're going to rerun that that wizard again. Uh, well, let's go to services and look at the browser. Um, that should be started. I don't know why it stopped. I could have possibly stopped it earlier. And then we're going to try again. So the way that you get this thing running is you go to Microsoft SQL 2005, configuration tools, and then open the surface area configuration tool. So now what you're going to do is you're going to click on Add New Administrator, and we're going to try this again. And we get the same error. Let's read it closer. Oh, it's Microsoft Analysis Server Services. It's not SQL Server that's the problem. A connection cannot be made. Ensure that the server is running. So now it's not saying anything about the browser service because we turned that on. But it is still saying that the system can't be found, and it is actually Analysis Services that's throwing the error. So let's go back and look. And if you remember earlier in the video, I disabled it. I said I don't need it running all the time. Well, that may be true, but I still need it to be actually running to do this. So uh, analysis services is still in manual and it stopped. So let's start that up. And let's try it again. One more time. And there you go. SQL Server 2005 is installed. Now, a few words of warning. It's not actually the server that's not compatible with Windows 8. It's really the um, SQL Server client tools that have the problem. If you are using SQL Server 2005 in a development environment, it's probably a good chance that you have other versions of SQL Server that you're using as well, like SQL 2008, SQL 2008 R2, maybe SQL 2012. You can use the later versions of the, the compatible client tools to connect to any SQL server. So you should be able to open up a SQL 2008 R2 client tools screen to, um, to administer SQL Server 2005. Let me show you an example of some of the problems, okay? SQL Server 2005 Management Studio can't see any local database services. Even though I know for a fact that the SQL 2005 right now is running on this machine. But if I actually type this in with the instance name and I connect, it'll connect. So knowing that these minor problems exist, it's probably a good idea not to try to use this tool, Management Studio, to administer or work with SQL 2005. It's better to use a more compatible Management Studio like 2008 R2 or 2012. Okay, so that's it. We've got our SQL Server installed. Everything should be working fine now. This is Jerry Butow with App Dataworks IT Consulting. I hope you uh, learned something from this video, and I hope that it helps you get SQL 2005 installed on your machine so that you can do your work. Have an awesome day.